and we're all set. So um, thank you, Don, so much for joining us today. Um, I'm Nora, I'm with Travel Leaders, and we've brought Don in here from Rocky Mountaineer to talk to you all about some amazing rail journeys. And I'm gonna turn it over to you, Don, to get started. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks so much, I really appreciate it. And I have 30 minutes, right, Nora? That's right. Okay, 30 minutes. Well, welcome aboard Rocky Mountaineer. Uh, very excited to, to talk to you all about it. Uh, I love this slide. So first of all, I should give you the background. You know, we've been in business for more than 30 years now and providing all kinds of rail journeys uh, through the Canadian Rockies and now in the United States as well. So very excited about that. I'll, I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, love this slide because it's so true. Uh, the majority of the route that you go on on Rocky Mountaineer is inaccessible by car. And I'll show you some of the pics that, that show some of the sites that you see. So, so you really are down by the, the crevasses and the canyons and going through the rivers. It's, it's just a really unique way to see the area. Uh, three things that make Rocky Mountaineer unique. Um, first of all, the word day in this slide, day on board the train. We are daylight only train travel. You're going to some of the prettiest areas of the world. You wanna see it, right? You wanna see the Canadian Rockies. You wanna see America Southwest. You don't wanna be sleeping through at night and you certainly don't wanna be um, traveling at night. So we insist on our daylight only train travel. Uh, our world-class cuisine is another thing. And I, I know you're all probably thinking how good can train food be, but oh, <laughs> it can be good. <laughs> Trust me, it's uh, what I love about it. It's all locally sourced. So for example, in Canada, the beef is from the Alberta region. The salmon is from the Pacific Northwest. Um, we really do win award upon award upon award for our food. And the next are our engaging hosts. So we have hosts on board the train that of course take care of everybody's needs and serve everybody but they also are great storytellers and they tell you the history of the area, the sites that you're going to see. Um, and then of course, fabulous animal spotters. They actually carry walkie talkies with them. And if anybody on the train spots an animal, they yell out bear on the right and there you go. Everybody screams and jumps up and runs and takes a picture of the bear. And that's where it becomes a fun social interaction. Trust me, once that first bear, bald eagle, Bighorn sheep, mountain lion is spotted. Everybody gets into it. It's so much fun. So those are the three things that make us unique. Uh, daylight only train travel, world-class cuisine, and our engaging hosts. Okay. Um, gonna break it down a little bit. First is our rail service levels. I'll start with our silver leaf. Now you see a little US flag and a Canadian flag. This is because this is in both the US and our Canada routes. So silver leaf, single level rail car, you can see here big wide windows, uh, plenty of leg room in between. People are turned sideways taking pictures. So plenty of leg room in between and then you dine at your seat. So important note, remember every rail car, every rail car on board Rocky Mountaineer, every Rocky Mountaineer rail car has its own kitchen and culinary team. So food's not being made eight and 10 cars over and brought cold, nope. Plated to your preference right there in the rail car brought out to your to your seat on Silverleaf. You get a choice of two entrees at Silverleaf for breakfast and lunch, but everything is all inclusive when you're on the train. So be it silver or gold, uh, your meals, your snacks, your alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages are included no matter which class of service is taken, is chosen for, for Rocky Mountaineer. And that's true in the US or Canada. Gold Leaf is our two level rail car. You see the little Canada sign, it's only available in Canada. Um, Reason being that some of the tunnels in the US are just about that much too small, about, about a couple inches too small for our gold leaf rail car. So this is where you sit up top, big domed windows, um, you know, nice again, plenty of leg room on board, Rocky Mountaineer. And then you take a spiral staircase down to the main level. Whoops. There we go. Ah. My fingers are too fast for my, than my mouth today. Okay, so you take a spiral staircase down to the main level and dine restaurant style, tables of four to across from each other. You get a choice of about five or six entrees on, so on Gold Leaf, um, but again, all inclusive and has its own kitchen and culinary team. And then Gold Leaf also has this outdoor viewing area. 
So um, this is a great area to take pictures for avid photographers or really just to get some fresh air. Uh, it's The train only goes about 30, 35 miles an hour max. Remember that. So not a bullet train through Japan. Nice leisurely train ride through the Canadian Rockies. Okay, so those are our two classes of service. And now I'm going to talk about our rail routes in Canada. I'm going to do Canada first. Uh, so our rail routes are the solid lines. So two routes that go to Jasper, one that goes over to Lake Louise and Banff. Don't worry about that green dotted line yet. No matter what, please, please, please make sure there's an extra night in Vancouver. Truly, I'm not kidding, one of my top three favorite cities of the world. I love this city. It, it boasts the snow-capped mountains, but then it has the beaches and the glistening ocean waters as well. And there's so much culture and diversity there. It's truly an amazing city. You definitely want to spend at least at least one day exploring Vancouver. So I'll start with our Rainforest to Gold Rush route. And remember, our routes go either way. So you can start and end in Jasper or Vancouver. I'm talking Vancouver eastbound. Overnighting in the White Diamonds, Whistler and Quesnel. Now, what's unique about this route is the topography difference. So it's called Rainforest to Gold Rush. You have the, the um, Vancouver, which is technically rainforest, the mountains of Whistler. And now you're coming up to Quesnel um, and it's where the gold rush happened in Canada. So very diverse scenery. This is the Fraser Canyon that we travel through. And then uh, on to Jasper. This is a shot of Mount Robson, highest peak in the Canadian Rockies where they'll end your end your rail journey in Jasper. Again, just breaking it down into rail journeys. I'll talk about sightseeing in a bit. Okay. Uh, journey through the clouds is our two-day route that goes to Jasper overnighting in Kamloops. One of my favorite, favorite sites on this route is Pyramid Falls. I mean, honestly, just gosh, you, you can just see somebody sitting on in that gold leaf rail car and looking up at the at the the trees and the mountains, the Canadian Rockies, maybe searching for a bear, and then all of a sudden you come up, and this waterfall, this gorgeous waterfall, is just cascading down the peaks and the the cliffs and the rocks, and it's so beautiful. This is one of those sites that is inaccessible by car, so yeah, we could drive this this area if we wanted, but we couldn't see Pyramid Falls, so very cool. And then there's First Passage to the West, our historical route that again overnights in Kamloops. And instead of going northeast to Jasper, go straight east over to Lake Louise and Banff. Remember, Kamloops is really just overnight stopping, um, keeping the integrity of our daylight only train travel going. Okay, so there's no grandiose Fairmonts in Kamloops. It's a great city. It's a town of about 100,000. I really like it. Um, there's a park and great restaurants all within walking distance of the hotels. But, you know, it's just, there's no grandiose Fairmont properties. It's just um, an overnight stop, really keeping the integrity of our daylight only train travel going. In between Kamloops and Lake Louise are the spiral tunnels. Um, this is great for any history buff, train buff. Uh, the spiral tunnel, so back in the early 1900s, um, they connected 3,200 of kilometers of rail across Canada at a little town called Kregalaki, which we go past. Um, but they realized it was pretty dangerous. It was really steep and treacherous to travel. So they brought in engineers from Switzerland who literally blasted through the mountains. Remember, this is the early 1900s. Blasted through this, the mountains and created what they call spiral tunnels. Um, I always joke, we're not Disney World. Doesn't that sound like a Disney World ride, the spiral tunnels? <laughs> anyway, we're not Disney World. They actually look like a big giant curse of L. And what happens is the tracks go up and down at varying degrees, thus controlling the speed of the train. That's the end of my engineering spiel. Um, trust me, it's super cool. And it's an engineering marvel. And we are the only passenger train to run on this route and through the spiral tunnels. Don't forget about circle journeys. Circle journeys is when you take uh, one route over and another route back. Uh, Pre-COVID, when I was doing trade shows, almost every single trade show, somebody would come up to me and say, oh my gosh, Rocky Mountaineer, best trip I've ever taken, but I wish I would have had more time on the train, or I wish I would have gone both ways on the train. They can do that with a circle journey. I definitely, though, recommend minimum of 12 days, preferably 14 days to do a circle journey. So what a circle journey is, you're taking one route over. So say that red route, first passage over to Lake Louise, um, spending so two days on the rail. You want to spend a couple days, a few days at least in Banff and Lake Louise area, 
couple days in Jasper, then take another route back. So then two or three days back. Okay, and of course, um, while we are mostly about the train, we are not all about the train. We're pretty much mostly about the train though. So we do offer some great sightseeing. I could do a whole nother webinar on sightseeing activities. Um, just know that in, in Canada, we use the motor coach or self-drive. Um, we're not using so we're not doing self-drive in the United States. Uh, Moab simply does not have enough rental cars. We found that out a little bit the hard way this year. So self-drive is in Canada only. Easy driving, one road, you can't get lost. I promise you. And you can see here it's more highway driving. It's not like the 10 and 2 death grip on the wheel through some mountains that you may go through. The road is a highway kind of at the base of the mountains. Uh, probably the vast majority though of our clients, probably 85% do the, do the motor coach. So this is where that green dotted line comes in. There is no rail north and south between Jasper, Lake Louise, Banff and Calgary. Um, all kinds of things to do there. Uh, Moline Canyon, Athabasca Glacier, Athabasca Falls, the gondola uh, in Banff, there's hot springs in Banff, um, uh, Heritage Park in Calgary, all kinds of things to do in this area. Yoho National Park, Banff National Park, Jasper National Park. Tons and tons and tons of sightseeing. Okay, on to Rockies to the Red Rocks. Um, so proud to be announcing Rockies to the Red Rocks. It's, you know, for us to, for us to be able to do a, um, a route in, in another destination, it, it had to have a lot or all the same qualities that our Canadian route had to have. We had to be able to bring our trains down. Um, we had to, um, uh, it, it had to be a, a route that was, had, had uh, iconic destinations such as, you know, cities and then small towns as well. Sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. I knew what I was saying. So it had to have iconic cities, um, great little destinations. Really, it and it had to be somewhere where it could be multi-day, daylight only train travel, where there was somewhere to stop in between. So it really had to be somewhere that was best experienced by multi-day, daylight only train travel. And I'm telling you, we knocked it out of the park with Rockies to um, the Red Rocks. So this is our route, Denver to Moab, Moab to Denver, goes both ways, overnighting in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. I gotta tell you, I really didn't know what to expect, um, but I was blown away by the Red Rocks of Moab, Utah. I mean, just blown away. People always ask me, which do you like better, Canada or the US? They're just different. It's like comparing, I don't know, you know, Tahiti to Switzerland. I mean, both are gorgeous. They're just completely different. The Denver to Glenwood area, I'll show you a few pictures, is very Rocky Mountain-esque, uh, Canadian Rocky-esque, but then the Glenwood Springs to Moab is a little more um, uh, desert-like in, in the red rocks of that area. Glenwood Springs is a resort spring known for its hot springs, so that's kind of cool. It's It kind of has a, I don't know, it's very like it has a, a lot of street fair feel to it. There's some shops and there's some restaurants. Uh, sometimes musicians will just start playing, markets pop up, it's very cool. So we use our single level rail car. Just a reminder, we're only using our Silverleaf rail cars in Canada because the some of the tunnels, including the Moffat tunnel that we go through are just a few inches too short for our gold leaf rail car. So this is where you dine at your seat and your, um, your tray table comes down. Now, we do know that, uh, you know, people are used to sometimes our gold leaf in Canada. So we wanted to give everybody an, a chance to be able to, to upgrade a little bit while you'll be riding in the Silverleaf rail car and dining in the Silverleaf rail car. We do have an option for our Silverleaf Plus service. This is really cool. This actually is... Um, it used to be a conference room. So there was a long conference table that went right smack dab down the middle. We gutted it and we made it this beautiful, beautiful lounge car. Uh, it's about 400, I think it's $499 will be the price in 2022, $499. And what that does, that's for the two days, it just gives some extra space to walk around. Like I said, they'll still be dining at your seat in the, um, 
in the Silverleaf car, but there'll be, um, there's a bar in here. So we'll have some upgraded liquors because remember again, all inclusive on Rocky Mountaineer, including your uh, alcohol, uh, but some up upgraded liquors and also some more canapes and appetizers. Again, this is only in our US product. You cannot do Silverleaf on, in Canada. We have two of these lounge cars and both of them are in the US. There's some pictures, this is some scenery. I actually took this picture, I didn't crop it very well, but I took this, you can tell, from the, the train. So you can take great pictures from the train. This is the book cliffs in Mount Garfield. Uh, it's the largest escarpment in the United, I'm sorry, in the world, 250 miles long. And it's very, I took this, I went twice. I went in September and October. I can't remember which one this was. I think this might've been the, the beginning of October when I went. Um, Beautiful, beautiful scenery. Uh, you can see there's so many great pictures here. I actually, um, this is the one I wanted to show you. I love this reminds me of the Canadian Rockies. So this was taken between Denver and Glenwood Springs. So like I said, that day, very Canadian Rocky-esque. And then the next day, a lot more of the uh, the red rocks of in the desert of the Southwest. So uh, sorry, I didn't realize I had... <laughs> I didn't mean to do a whole slideshow on my vacation for you or my training for you. Um, I didn't realize I had that many pictures in there. So, okay, um, Denver to Glenwood Springs, overnight in Glenwood Springs, and then ending in Moab. Again, you can go both ways. So you can fly in or out of Moab. Tiny, tiny, tiny airport. One gate. I'm not kidding. One gate. I think it was the smallest airport I've flown into. So... Um, you can do that, or we have options to transfer to Salt Lake City or Las Vegas. Now, the Salt Lake City, uh, that can be a motor coach. It's four and a half hour drive straight through. So you figure with a motor coach, a couple stops, it's like five and a half hours. Um, or you can do what we call flight seeing. And on the way to Vegas, it's flight seeing only with the exception of one thing that I'll tell you about. So, um, the flight seeing. So we learned a couple things, this being our first year in the US, we learned a couple things and we learned that the transfer from Moab to Las Vegas was just too darn long. It is six and a half hour drive without stops. So it ended up being more like eight, eight and a half hours. And that's just, it did not get good reviews, let's put it that way. So that was, you know, everybody raved about the train, raved about the scenery, but that was one thing that that wasn't a rave. So we are doing now flight seeing. And what flight seeing is, um, it's on an airplane, a smaller airplane, but you're not, you know, 30,000 feet up or whatever. You are going over the national parks and actually touring the national parks where you can see it. You can take pictures. You can see the different, um, like in Bryce and Zion, uh, Capitol Reef National Park. So we actually fly over four of the five uh, mighty five national parks and then ending in Vegas. Again, you can start the other way as well. Okay, so we're doing something a little different this year. Um, again, one of our comments was there was really almost too, too much sightseeing because there's so many choices over there. People wanted more free time to be able to do things more on their own or to book different things. Because when you're in Moab, you gotta realize Moab is kind of the hub of, many of the national parks. You've got Arches National Park. You've got Canyonlands National Park. You have Dead Horse Point State Park all right there. And there's so many things to do. There's like Jeep tours and Hummer safaris and floating trips. And, and we were just packing too much in there. Um, so we're making it more like our Canadian product where the sightseeing you know, will be included, but it, it just... Um, uh, you, you're going to be able to pick and choose. Now, I can say that you can book everything right now, except for the sightseeing around the Arches National Park area. That is going to be available sometime in February. You can certainly book it through Moab Adventure Center um, if you want now, because that's who we're going to use. But as far as being loaded into our system, that will be sometime in February. Um, it's it's a project, so they're they're working very hard on it. So things are going to start, think of this um, as, as fairly customizable. We're starting with the classic package. It's just one night stays, uh, Denver, Glenwood Springs, Moab, and then either Salt Lake or Vegas. But we're, we're going to build from there, okay? So I'm kind of breaking it down to 
let you know, you can add nights in Denver. You can add nights in months. You don't have to remember, oh, I want the classic package or I want the excursion package. Um, just know that you can build off this classic package, which are the one night stays. Again, remember flight seeing to Vegas, motor coach or flight seeing to Salt Lake. So an example here, the excursion package, one night Denver, one night Glenwood, and then where the classic was one night Moab, now we're having two nights Moab, okay? And again, east or westbound, you go to the highlights package, two nights Denver, one night Glenwood, two nights Moab, and you can even you know add on in Vegas as well. So pretty much you can do almost anything you want. Just think of the classic package and then kind of build it from there. I would absolutely 100% recommend the um, uh, at least two nights in Moab, minimum, minimum, if not three. There's so much to do in that area, and it's so beautiful. Uh, like I said, it just blew me away on that. Now, we do have one exception to the rule, because there's always an exception to the rule, isn't there? So one exception to the rule is uh, we do have one kind of quote unquote guided vacation, and that is our at leisure package. This is where there is a motor coach to Las Vegas, but we're not doing it straight through. It's not like a transfer. Um, you're going to stop and see Capitol Reef National Park, Bryce and Zion, overnight in Bryce and then end with a couple nights in Vegas. So that's our only time you can take a motor coach to Las Vegas is by doing the at leisure package. Okay, yay, our promotions. Um, whoops, two slides there on that. We have our enhanced flexibility. Uh, this, is, this is fabulous. This is really, this came out December 3rd. You know, normally when you book Rocky Mountaineer, you have to pay the 20% deposit up front, non-refundable. Uh, we realize that times are a little different and changing, so we do need to have flexibility. We all need to be flexible in this day and age. And so we're allowing a, a one-time change as long as it's done within 60 days prior to departure. So think about final payments, do 60 days prior to, prior to departure. As long as it's done 60 days prior to departure, um, we will go ahead and do the uh, the one-time change. And this can be up to and including 2023. So say somebody wants to book in July 1st. May 1st comes around, mm, not so sure if they want to go in July. No problem, no questions asked. They will go ahead. They can transfer to um, anytime later in 2022 or 2023. This is something that those of us out in the field have been screaming from the mountaintops because we've heard it for at travel shows that, that people wanted this. Um, and we're so thrilled to announce our travel again promotion. This is going to be good for all of 2022. We're testing it out. So I hope we get a lot of repeat travelers because this is a good one and we want it to stay. So um, it's $500, it is Canadian, but still $500 off per couple, 250 per person if they've traveled with Rocky Mountaineer in the past. So they could have traveled in Canada three years ago and now they wanna do our US route. They could have traveled on our US route this year and, and now they wanna do Canada. They could have done US or Canada this year or whenever and wanna do it again, no problem. Um, so we're very excited about that, very excited. And now, drum roll, our good as gold offer. This is the first time we have ever, ever done this. Um, this is for Canada only, obviously, because our gold leaf service is only in Canada. Um, but book any 2022 Mac Rocky Mountaineer package. There's a couple caveats I'll tell you about. And free upgrade from silver leaf to gold leaf. That's a $1,240 per couple upgrade. Um, so $620 per person. This started January 17th. It is only good for two weeks. We're trying something different at Rocky Mountaineer. We used to have the same promos every time and they'd be good for months at a time. We're testing it out in 2022. I can tell you, I already know what the promo is for uh, starting February 1st. And it's not this, it's not this, it's not as good. It's still a good one, but it's not nearly as good as this. So this is a two week promo only. Get the word out there um, because it will go away. Now, couple caveats because all good things have to have caveats, right? Um, it is not valid for September of this year. So it's only valid for 2022 travel. 
but not valid for September because we are almost sold out in September. I'll be honest with you. Think about it, 2020, 2021, and now 2022 people are booking. Um, so September is almost a wash anyway. Um, it's also not good on our three-day route, the Rainforest to Gold Rush route. Again, same reason um, that that is almost sold out as well. So trying to get the word out for our journey through the clouds and our first passage to the West. Honestly, those are our two most popular routes anyway. So uh, it's a great, great promo, just not in September. So journey through the clouds, first passage to the West, and this is good until January 31st only. Okay, um, agent portal, uh, just make sure on how to book a package. Uh, you know, we, we've, we've resolved some of those long wait time issues, but there's a you tutorial- You don't have to worry that... about agent portal right now. We, we've got all of our consumers with us today. You're right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Um, my apologies on that, Nora. Thank you for, for chiming in on that. So that's it. That's all I have then for you. So thanks so much, everybody. And I appreciate your time. Please, please, please contact travel leaders. They are the experts. I've worked with them for quite some time. I love working with them. What I love about them, they're going to tell you, they're honest with you. They're going to tell you where you want to spend the money and where you can save some money. So, you know, just please contact them. Nora, what's the best way for them to contact? You know, I, I'm looking at the list here. Some of you I know. So hello for um, joining us today. You, you know, you've got our emails, but if you don't remember the email of your advisor, you can just email travel at tvlleaders.com or dial our number 763-231-8870. And someone will be able to talk to you and help you um, this is really a very good offer. I'm very excited about it uh, for those of you who want to give um, Rocky Mountaineer a try. So that's fantastic. I am going to, if you can stick around for just a few moments, Don, I'm going to ask you if anyone has any questions, um, they can feel free to put them in the Q&A or the chat. And I would be happy to, um, I guess, facilitate those questions. I do want to, I do want to mention one thing as well. Um, because this good as gold offer is so incredibly <laughs> lucrative and rich, um, you're, we are not able to combine the travel again offer with that. Okay, so in case there's anybody out there, I hope there are that already booked Rocky Mountaineer and you had a great time. Um, the, trust me, the good as gold offer is is your best bet, your best bet. So, so that is, those are the only things that are not combinable. All right. But you good will get the know. enhanced flexibility. You will get the enhanced flexibility. All right, good, good. Um, I don't see any questions coming in yet, but uh, can you tell us when when were you traveling on the U.S. route between Denver and Moab? What what time of the year did you go? I went so so this year we only. Uh, began operations August 15th. Um, and, and I went in September, I went mid September, and then second week of October, and I believe second week of October was when I took those pictures. Um, I took some great pictures both times. We did learn a lesson too, by the way. So it was so popular that we actually extended the season into mid November. But we realized it got dark. It got dark a little early. So we will not be doing that this year. Um, we are starting in April. By the way, both, both of our routes, Canada and the US operate April uh, through mid-October because of the daylight only. Um, if you were going one direction from Moab to Glenwood Springs, it, you were about an hour in the dark. We didn't like that. So it will be April through uh, about mid-October for this year. And right. both times were great. Both times were great that I was. Good. There is a question. Um, I don't know if you can go back to some of your original slides, um, mm -hmm. but someone um, was uh, missed a couple of minutes at the very beginning. Could you go back to the Canadian routes? Um, and, and just so you know, this is being recorded. So um, I will be sending out a link to the recording later. Um, but for Stephen, um, we'll be able to show you some information about those Canadian routes here very quickly. And if anyone else has any questions while we're, we're 
going back to the beginning a little bit, um, feel free to put them in our chat. So and I don't know if he has a, a question about a particular route, but but ignore kind of the red circle. That's the dotted line where um, the sightseeing happens. But our three routes in Canada are those three solid lines. Um, we have our green route, which is our three day route to Jasper called Rainforest to Gold Rush. That's overnights in Whistler and Quenelle. Our blue route is our two day route to Jasper overnighting in Kamloops. And then the red route is the first passage to the West that goes over to Lake Louise and Banff, again, overnighting in Kamloops. Excellent, thank you. Well, I don't see any other questions right now. I do wanna thank you all for joining us today. And Don, thank you very much for spending your time with us today. Oh my gosh. Uh, if anyone has so any questions, reach out to your advisor with Travel Leaders or give us a call 763-231-8870. All right, thanks everybody. Thank Have you. Have a great day. Uh-huh, bye-bye.